Oh dear. Yeah. It's a hard life job with Abby. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know. I'm lost with Abby. In the end. Yeah. First we deal with everybody's success. Now, where will we go today? I said, Kent have been out every day. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's good to get out, Ma. Well, I don't know. We've been to too many places and we've got no place for us to go. So he said, OK, we'll, we'll, we'll get in the car and go somewhere. So all right, we'll get in the car, we'll get to the bottom of the driveway. He said, now, where are we going now? Where are we going? I say, well, we went that way yesterday. We'll go this way today. So we go that way today. We'll just drive around, drive around. Nowhere, nowhere in particular, just drive around and then we come to a coffee shop, come to a coffee shop and go with coffee. He said, come on, I'll buy you coffee and then we'll have lunch or brunch, whatever the happen time happens to be. Breakfast, brunch or breakfast, whatever. Yeah, and that's what we did every day. And tomorrow I come, same thing. Where we go today, Ma? I don't know, Kim. So we drive around, we might drive, keep driving south. And then if we find, if we find a motel there that we look like we look at, we'll stop there. We'll go into the motel and that's where we'll stop for the night. And that's what we did. We always had our, our bag in the back in case we found a place we wanted to stop. And that's what we did, John. In the afternoon, well, you know, what time, what time do the races start, John? What time do the races well, start? We go all day. So, we get in the car and drive along. I'd have my crossword book, my reading book, because I know somewhere it's going to stop. Okay, I just want to pull in here for a few minutes, Ma. Okay? All right, Kim, it gets out. I get out my reading book and my crossword book. It's going to be more like half an hour. <laughs> so he was happy doing what he do in the afternoon. I was happy doing what I do with my books and stuff. Yeah. And then one, one day he was saying, oh, I want to get some petrol in the car. Come for a drive me while I go down the petrol. I said, Kim, but, but we only had, we only went out yesterday. He said, I'll buy you a coffee. <laughs> he knows I always like to have a coffee when I went out. So I'll buy you a coffee. Coffee would turn out to brunch. So we always had something else. But I said, can your tank is three quarters full? I know that because I drive it too. You've got three quarters full. He said, yeah, I just want to top it up. Where do you want to go? I just down to Granville. To top it up, 20 minute drive down to Granville. <laughs> to top it up, that much, John, top it up. Oh my God, John. Yeah, right, Kim. Oh, he was strange somehow, strange somehow. I don't know. Oh, you picked him. I wouldn't give him away for anything, John. we are not giving away for anything I can. It was my kid. Don't know why he did that to me. I wasn't there. But he must have been very unwell, John, for a long time because he never complained. He never complained of pain or anything like that. He never complained how unwell he was, John. It was Monday morning. I said to him, uh, all right, Kim, get ready now and go. So no, I don't feel like going, I'm too tired. I said, well, you don't have to drive, I'll drive. I said, just put the seat back, put your head back and go to sleep, I'll drive. So we did that. But at the end of that day, he was quite tired. So we, we had our dinner and we, actually the tennis was on, the tennis was on at the time in Melbourne. So we watched the tennis for an hour before he decided to get in the bed, yeah. So he did that, but the next morning he woke up. He woke up before me. 
I said, can you wait already? He said, he said, take me to hospital. Just like that. He never said anything about his sleep. He said, take me to hospital. So we packed up. But we raced down the freeway and that got to the hospital. They, they made him comfortable. They said they made him comfortable. Yeah. So he spent five days in that hospital. But on the third day, he was unconscious. And didn't talk to us after the third day. They had him on morphine. And he didn't talk to us after that third day. Yeah. For the last two days, we weren't able to speak to him because he couldn't answer us. We talked to him and talked to him and sing our hymns and say our prayers, but he couldn't open his eyes. He didn't realise we were there. Couldn't. And I can. And that made me feel very sad because why couldn't I see? Because I was with him all the time, all the time here. Why well, couldn't I see how unwell he was? How unwell he was. At that time, they weren't allowing people into their rooms and they allowed no visitors, mm. but they allowed one of us to go into the room at a time. So when I was there and, and, the, and someone else would come in to take my turn and the doctor came in and he seen how unwell Ken was. He was really unwell, he was out to it. And they still would only let one or possibly another one to come the changeover. And the doctor said straight away, he called the head nurse in. He said, he said, the family can come and stay here in the room for as long as it takes. We were allowed to stay in the room and we stayed with him. We stayed with him all day, all night, all day, and all night the second night. And at 5.30 on that second morning, we were all asleep, all asleep there in the room. And they never said go, we were very quiet, and they were very, they were very quiet. And, and they said, yeah, Jen was the first one awake. And then I was laying, I was sharing the lounge with somebody else. With I was sharing the lounge. And Jen said, Mum, I think he's gone. Just like that. So we all woke up. And he wasn't breathing. And he was gone. Yeah, I think about him all the time. Biggest part, biggest chunk of my life gone. But my life's not the same, even I've got my children and all that. My life is not the same. I wake up in the morning, I think, I look up to his pillow next to me and I say, there's not there, not there. A horrible feeling there's not there. So, why am I getting up? What am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? That beautiful photo up there, he's smiling there. I said, Ken, why, why are you smiling? It's not funny, you're always smiling. I love that photo behind me up there. He's always got the same beautiful smile. He said, why are you smiling? Because it's not funny. 